Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Jamaica News in Review Veteran broadcaster Francois St. Joss has died. The well-known co-host of Radio Jamaica's morning program, Sunnyside Up, died this morning at the University Hospital of the West Indies. He was reported the alien for some time. Up to the time of his death, Francois was co-host of the morning show with Paula and Porter Jones. The news of his passing has rocked the Radio Jamaica team, the wider media fraternity, and many Jamaicans. Francois has been a broadcaster for over three decades. He joined the team at Radio Jamaica, formerly RJR, in 1984 while completing a degree in physics. His mother worked in media and his father was an iconic film and video producer and director of photography. Francois was invited to join the famed 95 FM team by Don Toppin, Norma Brown Bell, and Holt Palmer, and quickly made a name for himself as one of the bright young stars of the fame 95 FM family. His ascension was swift. In 1987, he became supervisor of the fame 95 FM staff. Then in 1991, he was promoted to assistant programs manager, and in 1996, he rose to the position of manager executive producer of fame 95 FM. In 2007, he stepped up even more, becoming the general manager of Radio RJR, Fame and Hits. In 2012, he began hosting the Saturday morning show on Radio Jamaica, a prelude to his current position of host of Sunnyside Up, the weekday morning show. The veteran broadcaster also served his community and was a member of the Rotary Club of Kingston, where he acted as president in 2014. Meanwhile, there has been an outpouring of tribute across social media on the veteran broadcaster's passing. Prime Minister Andrew Holness took to social media platform Twitter to highlight Francois' work. He says Mr. Francois brightened every space he occupied and was very easy to love. The Prime Minister also noted that Mr. Francois was always professional and had a passion for what he did which made it more than a job for him. Prime Minister Holness ended by offering condolences to the family and loved ones of Mr. Francois. And Minister of Culture and Entertainment Oliver Grange said Mr. Francois certainly made his name in the radio broadcasting in Jamaica by becoming a household name among radio listeners across the island. In her tribute, Minister Green says a bombing force from an expert presenter began the microphone, had been silent, and the echoes in his memories will last for a long time. She further extended sympathies to Francois' family, his relatives, son side or partner, Paula and Porter and the RJR group. Howard Cook Primary School mourns passing of Vice Principal Veronica Headley Jennings. The Howard Cook Primary School in St. James has been plunged into mourning following the passing of Vice Principal Veronica Headley Jennings this morning. Speaking to reporters, the school principal Dave Scott said Mrs. Headley Jennings was a brilliant educator who has left a mark on all who interacted with her. Vice Principal Mrs. Veronica Jennings passed off this morning, sadly. Um, uh, it's, it's really a devastating news. She was so loved by by the entire school population. She is the only teacher that has been there since 1989 when the school just began. And she was loved. She was in everything. She was in everything in the school. And to hear this news this morning, it was it's so heart-wrenching, hard to swallow. But we just have to keep strong and keep going on because we have to live on, live on her legacy that she has left by, by the school. She was to be acting as principal come September 1 because I'll be going up on leave or I should be going up on leave. We'll take today to just grieve and then come tomorrow I'll meet with my board and my senior staff and my education officer and to see the way forward. But we're just going to take today and to even think about that. Tomorrow we'll see where it goes from there. Man set ablaze near Hero's Circle. The Kingston Central Police are proving an incident in which a man was set ablaze this morning in the vicinity of Hero Circle in Central Kingston. Reporters understand that a police team on patrol in the area discovered the man on fire and rushed him to the hospital. He reported the die while undergoing treatment. Preliminary reports indicate that the man may have been living on the streets. Traffic in the area was this morning diverted due to the scene being processed by the police. It's not immediately clear what circumstances led to the man being set on fire. Up to news time, efforts to get an update from the Kingston Central Police and the Constable Corporate Communications Unit were unsuccessful. Man shot and killed in Ochara, St. Anne. A man was shot and killed 
along the Bone Point Main Road in Ochre St. Anne on Sunday evening. The deceased has been identified as brother of Falkland in Ultra Riots. Reports are that about 7.20 p.m., citizens heard explosions and summoned the police. Upon the arrival of the lawmen, the man was seen suffering from a gunshot wound to the head. He was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. The St. Anne police are theorizing that the incident was as a result of an ongoing gang feud. Over 150 students received textbooks for schools in St. James. Over 150 primary and secondary students were gifted textbooks by a member of parliament for St. James Central, Herald Clark, on Sunday. The students got at least four textbooks during a handing over ceremony at the Montego Bay Civic Center. The recipients are non pan students and students who did well in this year's PEP exams. The books were provided by Stationery World. Mr. Clark said the initiative, which is funded by the government, is aimed at helping parents and children who are struggling to prepare for the resumption of school next month. Each year at around this time, we try as best as possible to support our constituents in as many ways as we can. On Wednesday last at Jared Park, we had our children treat wherein we would have asked parents to bring in the children on that day. We would fed them as best as possible. And at the end of the day, when they were leaving, we would have given them a small token uh, bag with some pencil sharpness, a few books. Just to say to you, we understand the pressures of life. PSOJ reiterates call for cooperation between opposition and government to achieve consensus on crime. The private sector organization of Chaminka PSOG says political will and maturity are required for the consensus on crime. With Jamaica's murder tally itching close to 1,000 mark, there have been calls from the consensus on crime fighting. PSOG President Keita Duncan is urging the political directorate to begin the dialogue with a level of urgency as Jamaicans are hoping for a positive outcome. In a statement, Mr. Duncan outlined the antecedents of the Consensus 2020 Crime Monitoring and Oversight Committee CMOC, subsequent issues that arose relating to use of states of emergency and mixed messages from both sides of the political divide about the consensus. He noted that primary era of discord seems to be on the short-term strategies around the containment of crime. The private sector organization of Jamaica is, is really calling for our political leadership, the government of Jamaica and the opposition, to really sit down to work through the short-term crime strategies. These measures will be contained under the enhanced security measures, which has been outstanding for quite some time. And we believe that there is a solution there that will satisfy both parties concerned and in the best interest of Jamaica and in terms of saving lives as much as we can, we need to make the effort. We have heard a lot of back and forth and tit and tat around the consensus and whether there is a genuine consensus and we have heard the opposition leader call for bail royal talks. We have heard the opposition spokesperson on national security calling for the Prime Minister to apologize for remarks made while he was opposition leader, you know, and there is so much back and forth and banter that I think that we need to put the country first and really sit down as leadership of both political parties and do what's in the best interest of Jamaica. The tit and attack between um, the government of Jamaica and the opposition only leads to confusion in the minds of the public. And what we really want is a united fight and stand against this crime epidemic which we face, which has taken thousands and thousands of lives over the last two decades or more. And so we really would like to have a un unified position and a mature position. Juveniles nab with firearm in Trelawney. Three juveniles are in custody following a seizure of a firearm on Lower Harbour Street in Falma, Trelawney on Monday. The police report that about 1.30 a.m., a security team responded to sensor alarm that went off in the vicinity. The security officers saw the three men walking along the roadway acting in a manner that arose their suspicions. They were accosted and searched. One burning pistol with an empty magazine was found inside a knapsack bag in their possession. The teens along with the firearm were subsequently handed over to the police. Investigations are ongoing. Corporate error cards first case of monkeypox. Jamaica has confirmed its fifth monkeypox case. According to the latest statistics released by the Ministry of Health and Wellness, the case was detected in Kingston and St. Andrew. 
This marks the first case to be reported outside of rural Jamaica. The other four confirmed cases are reported in Clarendon 2 and St. Elizabeth and St. James 1. This is Jamaica's third locally transmitted monkeypox case, which means the person had no recent travel history and is not linked to any of the previous cases. The patient is now quarantining at home. There are currently three active cases of monkeypox on the island. Two patients have since recovered from the virus. The ministry stated that it will be releasing monkeypox stats every Monday, which will complement the public education campaign and community engagement activations. Motor vehicle crash in Braco Trelawney leaves three dead and several others injured. Three people are dead and several others injured following a major crash along the Braco Main Road in Trelawney yesterday afternoon. The deceased have not yet been identified, but two of them are said to be the drivers of two of the three vehicles involved. The crash occurred sometime after 1 p.m. Acting Head of the Trelawney Police Division, Deputy Superintendent Winston Milton, said a Honda motor car, a Nissan motor bus and a Costa bus were all transporting hotel staff were involved in the crash. Early investigation has indicated that the driver of a white Honda City motor car and the driver of a white Toyota Costa motor bus were traveling westerly along the Brockhamine Road towards the direction of Duncan. As a driver of a white Nissan Irvine was traveling in the opposite direction. Uh, it appears that the driver of the Nissan motor car bus failed to keep to the left hand side of the and collided first with the Honda motor car, then the Toyota Costa. Both drivers you know, instantly killed as a result of the impact. A female passenger from the Nissan motor bus was pronounced dead on arrival at the Falmouth General Hospital. One hotel staff member, Opal Bodhi, who lives in Brocco, said she almost boarded the staff bus but was signaled by the driver that there was no available seat. She said she interacted with the driver, who is known as pastor on numerous occasions. I'm carrying my mom up every night, so I'm not feeling well right now. I'm weak. I'm nearly, I'm nearly almost on that bus because when he passed, he's saying, trash me and saying, pull up. So I'm like, okay. And by the time I catch on next, the next bus and go on the corner, it was not a good sight. All my co worker bleeding and chop up and uh, the driver we call him past time died and this instantly on this spot. Right now I'm still nervous and shaking. I don't know if I can go to work tomorrow. Meanwhile, another broker resident, Hilton Brody, described the accident scene as gruesome. She is urging motorists to be cautious on the roadways. It wasn't a good look, trust me. Wasn't a good look for the, for the staff members of the hotel and the driver also. The two drivers died on spot. And you have a lot of staff members rush off to hospital. I am very much so sorry for the families that going to get this news this evening. All I have to say, Motorists take time on the road. Take time on the road. Meanwhile, staff members of the H10 Ocean Cross Spring Hotel have gathered at the hospital where their injured colleagues were being taken following a motor vehicle accident early in the afternoon. Relatives of the injured workers are also being contacted. A representative told reporters that information about the incident is still being gathered, including how many workers were on the bus. The coaster bus had begun its route from Brownstown to St. in St. Anne and picked up several workers along its way to the hotel in Trelawney. The hotel representative said, while many workers are injured, some seriously, there is a sense of relief that no hotel staff has died. However, there is grief for the driver of the bus who was contracted through a tour company. A representative of the tour company told reporters that details of the incident are still being gathered and no comment will be made at this time. Education Minister Fava Williams says schools are finding qualified replacements after over 200 teachers resign. Education Minister Fava Williams has sought to assure that although 248 teachers have resigned, school administrators are finding qualified replacements. Mrs. Williams, who was speaking at the Back to School press conference yesterday afternoon, said with so many of the vacancies already filled, Schools will be in good position to be open on Monday 
for the new academic year. She noted, for example, that schools in Region 2 have reported that 80% of the vacancies have been filled with qualified teachers. We have 248 resignations. But I want to add, uh, you know, to that is that many of those vacancies would have already been filled. For example, Region 2, which would be St. Thomas, Portland, and St. Mary, they have reported that 80% of the schools reported that they have replaced teachers who have resigned. And two examples coming out of Region 2, Brown Book Primary and Port Antonio Primary, two very large primary schools, um, they have fully replaced their teachers who have resigned. In Region 4, which is St. Mary, Hanover, and Westmoreland, 75% of vacancies were replaced and interviews are continuing. We would have given to our principals a number of different strategies um, to use for recruiting teachers. Uh, we put out 15 different strategies and just recently we added um, to that the approval that we would have gotten from the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service for teachers who are on their long leave, whether it's four months or eight months, if they're so willing to come back and be their own replacement, that is uh, a facility that is now available. Expect traffic delays on first day of school, warns Education Minister. Education Minister Fever Williams is urging commuters, particularly students and parents, to expect delays and congestion on Monday morning. This coming Monday will represent the first full return of face-to-face -face learning since the COVID-19 pandemic. As is normal, the new school year begins on the first Monday of September. And so on Monday, September 5, we will see the return of our students all across Jamaica to the face-to-face -face environment. As you know, because the majority of our students have to be transported to schools, as would be normal, our streets are going to get congested. There will be more traffic come Monday morning. There will be delays. The ministry will continue its efforts to provide some 7,500 students on path with transportation subsidies of approximately $380 million through a rural transportation program. Uh, this is organized at the school level. Our principals know the part students in their schools and their transportation needs. We implore our students, our parents, and our teachers be as careful as you can be in traversing our roads um, as we open back our schools for face-to-face. -face. Our system of sending grants to schools has been activated. These include tuition grants, social premium grants, PATH grants, maintenance grant, ICT grant, STEM grant, TVET equipment grant, furniture grant, book grants to schools. The first tranche of the grant has been dispersed. The second tranche is to be dispersed in this September month. And of course, we will continue to support our schools in terms of the year-round maintenance efforts that we have that is well above what the grants that we send for maintenance could cover. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification.